Hey folks, it's me, Dr. Mike Isertel for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is, well, I guess you probably read the thumbnail, huh? Yeah, look at you all smart and then well ahead of the game. Biceps growth. We want to create a biceps specialization program to get the biggest biceps of all time, which as scientists have researched thoroughly, increases happiness by a thousand percent. How do we do that? And first, why? Why would we want to specialize on biceps? Why not just train them and grow them normally? You totally can train them and grow them normally, and they can grow in concert with the other muscles. You know, for every inch you gain on your pecs, you gain half an inch on your biceps or something that takes three or four years by itself. That's totally cool. You could, however, want to grow your biceps more than the rest of your body. And there's two ways to do that. One is you train your body normally and you train your biceps more than uh, usual or with a really intense focus, and that can get you a little ahead of the game. What can happen there is you can... Be training so much because you're training the rest of your body normal and your biceps at a super, super level, you can really impinge on your total recovery. So another way to do it is you retract a little bit on your normal training, maybe taking your chest and your triceps and putting them on maintenance volume, keeping everything else normal and pushing your biceps into super volume, super intensity, super focus, super specialization. And that way you get the most out of your biceps that you possibly could. Which one is best for you of those three? Depends on what you want. If your biceps are looking great, and uh, you like how they look compared to all of the other muscles of your body, just train them normally. If your biceps you think could use a little bit more work, but you know that the rest of your body isn't really pushing up against your systemic recovery ability, train everything normally, train your biceps in a specialization way that we're going to describe. It's going to be all, all over here. And then if you really you want your biceps much bigger than they currently are, and the rest of your muscles are sort of already bigger than your biceps, your biceps are a lagging group like they are for me, for example, then what you want to do is Take some of the rest of your body, put it on the back burner, take your biceps, put them into specialization mode, and watch the gains occur. When we say specialization, what do we mean? If you say, hey, look, I'm really specializing on getting my biceps bigger, it doesn't count that you just, after your chest workout or your back workout, you do a couple extra set of curls. That's bullshit. That's not a serious attempt at improving your bicep size, especially if they're resistant to growth. You're going to have to do much more. What does that mean? First, you're going to have to attend to specificity. You have to choose the best exercises for your biceps, the ones that really hit your biceps well and stay the hell away from hurting your joints, not just randomly doing bicep exercises, really thinking about them. Another one is modalities, things like drop sets, giant sets, straight sets, down sets. You're going to have to pick the ones that are the best for your biceps. Here's an example. In many cases of people who have biceps a little bit resistant to growth, straight sets of five to 10 barbell curls just aren't cutting it. Dry drop sets, my rep sets, they work much better. Give them a thought. Basically have everything in front of you as an option and pick which ones, which modalities, and which exercises you want to choose in order to get your biceps the biggest because, again, we're taking a serious approach to bicep training. Rep ranges. Sometimes it's fun to do sets of 5 to 10 for the biceps, but sometimes that doesn't grow you all that well. Sets of 20 to 30 could be brutal but could result in really good bicep growth. You have to choose the thing that works the best, not the thing you necessarily feel like doing. Another concept that we're going to take into what makes a real specialization program for biceps is prioritization. And here's where things start to get really wacky. All of you or most of you have heard probably your whole training life that you train compounds before isolations and larger muscle groups before smaller ones, which means in, if you're training back and biceps in one day, you train your back first with like pull-ups and rows and then eventually some isolation work and then your biceps last. And biceps are almost always trained with isolations so that on both them being not the big muscle group and them being the isolation versus compound, they get put last. However, if you train a muscle last, that means you're training it with the most fatigue coming in, which means you're least able to do it. It's like uh, telling yourself you want to write the best college application paper possible, but only ever sitting down to write it after like 12 hours of brutal work in your current job and another eight hours of school before that or something. You're just not going to write the best a college application paper because you're tired. It's the same thing with muscles. How would you write the best college application paper? You get a ton of rest on Saturday, tons of sleep, tons of fun, tons of food, relax, tons of sleep. Um, so that Friday night to Saturday night, tons of sleep there, rest all of Saturday, Saturday night to Sunday night, tons of sleep there, wake up, warm up, get your brain fresh, and then start going. That's right. You want to be fresh for when you do something very important. If that doesn't make sense to you, holy fuck, right? Um, it was actually... I was in a, a little bit of a heated online discussion back in the day with someone who said that uh, fasting made you cognitively superior to having had food. And I was like, okay, fine. 
if you are going to take in a really important standardized test, do you go in fasted or do you have something for breakfast? He never responded. So same idea here, but here's where the wacky stuff happens. If you design, let's say you have three pull days, including biceps, maybe some side and rear delts and some back in a week. Prioritization means that many of those days you want to train biceps first. I didn't stutter. That means you go in and you do barbell curls and then you do easy bar curls and then you do underhand pull-ups or pull-downs or something and then you do rows and then you leave. But hold on, Dr. Mike, won't us training our biceps first really limit our back training? Yes, but you wanted to prioritize biceps and we took you seriously, which is why prioritization has been a thing that has been implemented. If you say, well, well, hold on a sec, but what about my back? You didn't say anything about your back. And remember, it's really easy to maintain your back. Even if you train it after bicep, just throw three or four sets at it per session, your back will never get smaller. So you can maintain your back exactly as big and jacked as it is now by pushing your biceps first, putting your back second. If you really want to grow your back, would you want to train it second? No, you want to train it first, but then it's priority for back and not bicep. You guys see how that works? So even though it turns into a really wacky looking program, you see someone doing a you know, you watch, you know, of course you always watch other people at the gym. I watch them incessantly. There's this one guy I've been watching for years. I've told him I've been watching him, but one of these days I'll have the boss to come up to him and eh, just give him a hug. You know, what? In any case, you watch people do the program and you're like, that guy did biceps first and then back. What an idiot. But if he's prioritizing biceps, that makes a lot of sense and it's wacky and it's weird, but it works. Next frequency. All the time, people say, I want to get my biceps bigger. I train them once a week. Motherfucker, do your biceps take one fucking week to recover? Are you out of your fucking mind? Sorry for swearing, JK. Sorry, not sorry, which is the worst, worst quote ever. The only people that I've ever seen use that quote seriously are like sociopaths, as far as I can tell. In any case, I digress. People will say, I want big biceps. They'll train them once a week. That's nonsense. You want to train your biceps at least two times a week, but often three or four times a week for many weeks on end in order to really drive that signaling home because biceps are positioned and designed in your body in such a way that they're not super exposed to damage. You're not able to stretch them under load a ton, which also means they're resistant to growth considerably, but they're also resistant to fatigue. So you can do biceps three or four times a week and not pay any fucking price for it at all. And as a matter of fact, that's really good training. Whereas if you try to do that for your quads four times a week for quads and you train quads hard, you may fall apart into a bunch of tiny little pieces. And then the investigators with the big, um, Lupa, what the fuck is that called in English? A uh, magnifying glass will be like, oh, oh, he tried a leg workout too many times. That's what they're going to find out about you. So all of these things, using the right stuff, the right exercises, the right rep ranges, the right modalities, putting biceps first often in a program, maybe second. Okay, so okay, you do some underhand pull-ups first, but then the next exercise is biceps. If you're serious about big biceps, you do them early. If you're really advanced, and we're not going to talk about this in this presentation, but you can actually split your workouts up into AM and PM workouts, and like PM or even AM can just be biceps, and that is a really good way to hit your shit. You might not be so dedicated, so at least if you train once a day, train your biceps mostly first, and of course, the frequency has to be higher than one, or even two times a week, usually three or four is the golden ticket. If you want the extra extra to really push your biceps ahead, you might want to reduce the amount of training you're doing, especially in synergist groups. What is a uh, something that uses biceps as a synergist? Your back training. Almost all pulling uses your biceps. That fatigues your biceps a little bit. It interferes with growth to some extent in them if you're trying to get them optimally. So if you really want bigger biceps, what I would do is I would take your back, put it on the back burner. LOL, back. I said back twice. That's why it's funny. So maybe three or four sets each session for back at the end of your bicep work. Minimum interference, that's probably the best way to do it if you're really serious about bicep improvements at the expense of everything else, or rather improvements for a while, everything else comes up later. All right. So when you're constructing your specialized bicep plan, here are a couple of tips I have for you as to how how to do it correctly. Three or four bicep sessions per week as far as frequency. Ideally, you train them right before back in the same session or the day after a very easy back workout so that your biceps are fresh, they're not affected by the back workout, and it's a while until the next back workout so your biceps have lots of time to recover. You don't want a situation in which your biceps are either being trained when they're tired or shortly after they're trained, they're being hit hard again through synergist movements. Once a muscle group has been hit, it should have at least one day, hopefully more, to really, really recover without being asked to work hard again on anything else. We'll talk about how to set up that program in just a little bit with an example. Exercises. 
heavy or challenging curls can be the core of many bi- good bicep programs. They don't have to be, but it's a really good idea to start if you've never done it before. Another thing about biceps is there's actually a bunch of angles with which to attack the biceps from and a bunch of different modalities and machines. So I highly recommend using those. It's not a thing where it's just like, okay, name bicep exercise. You go barbell curl, dumbbell curl. That's it. There's cable curls. There's free motion cable curls. There's one arm cable curls. There is incline dumbbell work, which stretches your biceps back here. It is actually fucking amazing. Tons of different exercises. I'm going to have some examples for you. There's a bunch of examples in our other resources I'll post later at the end of this video, but there's tons of exercises out there. I would use many of them because if you just do in curls, barbell curls, and they run their course and they no longer get you much growth, it's not like that's the end of the road. There's lots of other stuff to use. Set numbers, as usual, if you've been watching along with the series for the past several months, two to six sets per session for biceps is where you can start. With biceps, they recover really fast, so you can start to increase that volume of work as auto-regulation demands. <laughs> Loading and reps. First thing, whenever you do your biceps, if you do them in one workout, heavier work goes first because you're fresh. You can do heavy really well fresh. If you're tired, you can still burn out. No big deal. So higher reps are totally fine when you're tired. They're not as good uh, when you are fresh. You want to do heavy work first. So that's the first thing. Second thing is as far as rep ranges, you know, sometimes we say like hamstrings really just generally for most people do well with low reps. With biceps, it's a really mixed bag. Oftentimes higher reps work better, but really it's what's the best stimulus to fatigue ratio for you. If you find that sets of 10 to 20 really nail the shit out of your biceps and your elbows feel great, man, you're going to be doing a lot of sets of 10 to 20. If you find at the same time that sets of 5 to 10 work okay, but your bicep tendon feels kind of weird and even your elbow hurts a little because it's so heavy, maybe that's not the best thing. On the other hand, sets of 20 to 30 for biceps, you may be like, yeah, I would get a good bicep workout, but at sets of 20 to 30, it's so many reps that my forearms get a really big pump, and then I quit the set because the forearm pump, not because of the bicep pump, or the forearm burn, not because the bicep burn. Ah, okay, so maybe set sets of 20 would be your best, right? That kind of exploratory process to find out where your best stimulus to fatigue ratio are as far as rep range means you'll bias more of your training, not most, not all, but more of your training to that rep range, uh, whichever one gets you the best SFR. All right, progressing through your plan as usual, if you are able to do a certain volume of work and recover very easily, you can add a set to that workout for next week. So if I do six sets of biceps this Monday, by Wednesday when I train biceps again, I am not sore at all. I feel really fucking strong and I actually felt strong already the day after. Next time, instead of doing whatever four or five sets that I did last Monday, I can do five or six sets on this next Monday, reevaluate on Wednesday and keep going like that week after week after week. The goal is not to increase sets. The goal is to arrange the sets in such a manner that you time your recovery almost exactly to when you have to go again. The ideal workout for hypertrophy is one in which it really fucks you up in the moment and for a day or two after. And then right before your next workout is scheduled, you've recovered essentially almost 100%. You feel really strong. You're not sore anymore. Here's a real big tip though. A lot of people just don't get sore in the biceps, which is totally understandable. But you will have a sensation of, am I feeling really strong? Am I ready to train biceps again? Of course, that'll be uh, measured by your performance. If your performance starts to decline, you clearly were not recovered. But there's the thing where you might lean a little bit less into the soreness as an indicator for biceps and more into the feel of how recovered you are as far as strength. So if Monday you did eight sets and Wednesday you have to do biceps again and you're like, fuck, man, my biceps aren't sore. Fuck, they're tired, bro. Eight sets is probably too much. Next week, do six sets. You do six sets next week on Monday. On that Wednesday, you feel fucking strong as hell. You hit some really good PRs. Man, you're really swimming in the in the good stuff then. And then you just do six sets again the week after because that seemed to be a good amount. So that through that auto-regulation, you get to a number of sets with every session that works really well to get you really hit hard and get you recovered on time to have another great bicep workout. Reps in reserve. Start out three reps in reserve or so. <laughs> Uh, you know, subtract one rep in reserve every time, go a little harder, add two and a half to five pounds or add a rep here and there as you're able to, and then go from two to three reps in reserve. Next week is two, then one rep in reserve, then zero reps in reserve, and then you deload, something like that, right? Progressively make it a little bit harder. I will say that a lot of people say, well, look, biceps, they're an isolation movement. Can't I just go to failure? You can go to failure if you're into that sort of thing. You have to understand you are just pleasing yourself psychologically at that point. 
being able to go to failure and failure being the best idea are two different concepts. I would still say that in most cases, two or three reps in reserve at the beginning lets you get a really good inroad on some momentum to do amazing things with your bicep training weeks later. If you go to failure right away, you limit how much volume you can do and probably how much growth you can do. The research on failure training is pretty clear by now. Going all the way to failure in a, in a longer program is unsustainable, and it's just not the best idea in the world for growth. Starting a little bit shy of failure is probably better. Even if you feel like, well, see, it's not that much of stomach fatigue. I really can crush this set and go all the way to failure. What you can do and what you should do are two different things, two different things, and you might not necessarily want to just do what you can get away with. All right. What does this look like as far as a sample plan? I'm going to throw some shit at you. This is a really intense session or an intense plan. Uh, it's a lot of stuff and you could do much less than this and grow. I just wanted to show you guys. I want to show off a little bit. This is like the last resort if your biceps won't grow. So Monday, we do straight bar bicep curls, incline dumbbell curls, two different angles of attack there, two sets for each, heavy first, lighter after, everything's three reps in reserve. Tuesday, behind the body free motion cable curls. It's when you have a free motion machine, you cable curl, you put them here and you curl like this. We have plenty of videos of that, and uh, it's a great exercise. So you're going to do straight sets, heavy, and then you're going to switch to my reps, much lighter. That's a shitload of work. Good thing is you stay on the same machine. You don't have to trade out and go find machines in your gym to use, and someone's taking it. And also, you just get in, get your mind right, get all the work done, and leave. That's really sweet. Thursday, similar. You do incline dumbbell curls on Thursday. Again, heavy, and then my reps after. Fries the shit out of you. Saturday, you start with easy bar curls. Again, heavy. And then you do supinating cable curls with the rope, which means you grab the rope at the top ends. And as you curl up, you push your pinkies into the sky and then back down and pinkies in the sky. Uh, the biceps is involved in supination. So that's a pretty good movement. Not a heavy hardcore movement that's going to get you a ton of growth as a meat and potatoes first movement. But good news, we already did easy bar curls. And all through the rest of that other week, we did tons of other really effective movements. So that would be week one. Notice mostly everything is for two sets at the end. A final pre-deload week would look like things are mostly for four or three sets per exercise, and everything is now at zero reps in reserve. That's going to be really intense. Of course, you're going to be using a little bit more load by this point, a few more reps added to each set. That really fries you up. Deload, wash out, get rid of the fatigue, repeat. Ta-da! And feel free to pause this video at any time and copy this down and use it as your own program for free. You're welcome. Now, Another question, last question is, how long do I specialize for? How long do I have to beat the shit on my biceps for them to make the progress I want? But it's definitely not a week and it's definitely not two weeks. I would recommend at least one mesocycle, four to six weeks, including a deload, to see any kind of measurable, noticeable improvements. Ideally, ideally, I would recommend an entire block of training, which means three mesocycles, like four to six weeks, four to six weeks, four to six weeks all stacked one on top of the other, one after another, and all of them focused on biceps, biceps, biceps. Maybe two sessions of biceps per week in the first one, three sessions of biceps per week in the second one, four or five in the third one, lots of heavy work early, then more moderate rep work in the middle mesocycle, in the last mesocycle of the block, focusing more on drop sets and super high rep work, saving the joints a little bit because they're already pretty creaky from all that work. After that, you do two weeks of active rest or four weeks of low volume maintenance work, resensitizing the muscle to further gains. And then you can either do any other routine you want, or again, come into another block through massive cycles of high specialization on the biceps, right? No wrong answers here. Just make sure that after three mesocycles of bicep work, you do an active rest or a low volume phase where you back away on almost everything and let all that bullshit heal up so you can hit it hard again. And if you just want to keep doing bicep specialization phases for a long time, all right, eventually you're going to have a uh, I was going to say big biceps, but that's not true because genetically you could be unable to do that. Much bigger biceps than you first started out with. Lastly, we got some other resources for you. Exercise video library. By the way, these are all below uh, in the uh, in the description. Exercise video library. If you don't know what, uh, you know, you, you're like, okay, I know some exercises for the bicep, but I don't know that many. Where the fuck do I look these up? And also, I just want a name of an exercise. I want an actual video and description of the technique. Boom, you got it for free right in the description. Uh, in the description below. Muscle group training guide. We have broken down every muscle group, including the biceps, into like a multi-page, super detailed document of sets and reps and exercises and modalities and variation and periodization. If you want to really nerd out, that's for free. That's also in the description. 
we have hypertrophy made simple video series of all the stuff is like a little new to you, like SFR, stimulus to fatigue. What the fuck does that mean? No worries. Hypertrophy made simple videos. We got them in. It's like 16 videos and each one's like eight minutes long. And they really hook you up with the basic concepts to really understand what you're doing. Come back to this. It'll make a whole lot more sense and you can get a good program going. For not free, we have a hypertrophy book, Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy Training. We recommend all the stuff. And if you're a little bit nerdier and a little bit more skeptical, you could say, why the fuck are they structuring the shit like this and not like that? And the reason is all, all kinds of really good reasons described in the book. Books like 0% bullshit, 100% straight facts, son. Finally, I could I could see that. I, I really like it when uh, people respond to nonsense by just going like facts because you don't, you don't have to say you agree with it. You just say facts ironically and just people maybe either keep ranting or shut up. In any case, there's lots of facts in that book. You might enjoy it. It's not free, but it's pretty cheap. And then if all this stuff seems really good for you, but you've never really built your own plan before, you've built your own plan, but you're kind of like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm really good at building plans. We at Renaissance Periodization have set you up with a program. You just go on our website and click right on the link below, and it takes you to build a custom plan of your own. So you just put biceps on specialization. There's literally a button that says specialization for biceps. You pick however many days you want a week, pick all the other muscle groups you're training, it sends you a workout. You pick all the exercises that you want as your favorites. It takes care and you put in your 10 RMs. It takes care of all the loading. It just tells you what to do every single fucking week. It also has a rating scale based on how your soreness and your pump are going. You can increase or decrease how many sets you're doing in the future weeks. So all you got to do is rate the workouts accurately and the workouts program themselves just for you. Amazing. And at the end of the day, it works really sweet. It's like a hundred bucks. The program you get is six weeks long, but the thing is you can reuse that program with different exercises for as long as you want. So at the very least, you can use it for an entire block of training, which might be 18 weeks long for 18 weeks, a hundred dollar program. Yeah, that's not that bad. And you can reuse it a year later and fuck man, you're still same program. No need to pay us. Once I get the hundred dollars, I get about 50 cents out of that. The rest goes to Mr. Nick Shaw because his butlers are very expensive and 50 cents of that 45 cents goes to my Lamborghini fund. Five cents goes to the butler fund. The butlers drive my Lamborghinis and take care of them. But Lamborghinis are very finicky creatures. They need lots of care. They live in a Lamborghini terrarium, uh, also on my grounds. Like When you get rich enough, you say grounds instead of property. Property is something poor people say about ownership. Uh, what was I saying? In any case, yeah, we got it all. You know what I'm saying? And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to get to those questions. And if you want to join our members community, that shit is also down there. Click join tons of other nerd stuff, tons of other insight, full workouts, uh, vlog style with me narrating them live while I do them, uh, in our little gym here, lots of good stuff there. If you want to do that. And at the very least like, and subscribe because other YouTube influencers that are more important than me, they say things like, like, and subscribe. I'm not entirely sure why they say them, but, uh, I want to be more famous. God damn it. Because fame equals money equals Lamborghinis. You guys know the drill. I'll see you next time.